Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Brains Applied. My name is Willem and today I'm recording from my sister's room because my hardwood floor had to get some oil. So please welcome my special guest, Mr. Teddy. Today we are going to have a short talk about why the prison system of the US kinda sucks. So imagine this, in the US there are 2,220,300 people in jail or in prison. That is about 0.91% of the population or about 1 in every 110 persons. Which is quite a fucking lot. To give you a better idea, the prison population of America is as large as the prison population of Russia and China combined. The idea of putting people behind bars relies on the deterrence theory. The idea that people won't commit crimes as they are afraid to be punished. Just like you don't do any speeding as you are afraid to be fined. This sounds great, but research has shown that imprisoning people doesn't help because it lacks effectiveness in treating individual cases. The tough on crime laws from the 1980s are putting non-violent crime offenders behind bars. An example of such a law is the mandatory minimum sentencing law. Being arrested in possession of one gram of LSD will put you in jail for at least five years. The researchers have even compared the current prison system with a medical system with the following quote. Imagine a medical system in which very sick and mildly sick patients are hospitalized with virtually no idea of whether they will emerge cured terminally ill or unchanged. Also, investigation has shown that longer and harsher prison sentences don't reduce the chances of recidivism, which is the chance that you will commit new crimes after you have been released. This is because of what they call the labeling theory. The labeling theory claims that offenders remain seen as criminals and prisoners during their life after imprisonment and thus they are unable to form social relationships and to find employment. Due to these reasons, they are more likely to become recidivists. Moreover, it is claimed that while being imprisoned, minor offenders pick up techniques and social values from major offenders which they can use in future crimes. So basically, you just build your way up in criminality. You start as a minor offender, go to jail, learn stuff, become a medium offender, major offender, maximum offender and eventually Donald fucking Trump. And if you think about all the taxpayer money that goes into putting people in jail, you will realize that this is really ridiculous. It has been shown that alternative sentences, like electronic monitoring, have a positive effect on whether people commit new crimes and how long it takes them before they do so. This is because they have a better chance of reintegrating into society. Researchers argue that combining imprisonment and electronic monitoring would be the best as it fits Braithwaite's theory of reintegrative shaming. And I don't know if I actually pronounced this name correct because it's almost as hard as Benedict Cucumber back. According to reintegrative shaming, the offender is shamed and punished for his behavior but without stigmatizing the offender himself. He is treated as a good person who has done a bad deed. It is, of course, very questionable how reintegrative shaming would work for major offenders such as Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, whatever suits you most. Because imprisonment takes dangerous people out of society and it also works as a sort of feeling of vengeance for the victim and his surroundings. Let's say I killed your mom. You are not going to feel like giving me electronic monitoring just because it's good for my reintegration into society. This is what I wanted to tell you today. We really need to change the US juridical system. I hope you actually liked this video. If you did, press the like button and don't forget to check out my previous videos. Also, press the subscribe button and the notification bell to receive a notification next time I upload a video and there will be next Friday. And I will see you guys later.